Here we go. The great big semi-final. And um, to each of the performers, the 48 performers that we had yesterday, to each of them, a big round of applause. Late this afternoon, I've, I've been hearing lots of rumours, talk, you know, just on that sideline and everything else, and about winners and stuff like that, and I go, you know, this is what it is to me. Every one of those people that stood up here and shared with you is a winner. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now my judges. First up, we have Little Fee, am I saying it right? Yes. Little Fee, she's been um, 20 years in the music industry, anyone know her? I've got her CD. She appeared at um, one of our Blue Moons recently. If you haven't been to a Blue Moon, I won't. Just don't miss one. So she's 20 years in the music industry. She programmed at Woodford for five years and she's been winner of the best Australian blues artist for five years in a row. Wow. Please welcome Little Fee. Oh. I'm so pleased to have her here. Thank you. Next up we have Jenny Dell. I'm sure a lot of our Local people here will know Jenny. She's Northern Star writer now for the Weekend Star Supplement. And she's, of course, a poet and performer herself. Jenny Dell. <laughs> and as is part of our... Well, we don't have many agreements here for his Newman Performance Poetry World Cup. But Ben Zenabon, last year's winner, that means it sort of stops him from coming into the next year. You know what you know, so I've got to give it a year's break. I've got to give it a break. Censor. <laughs> I try not to censor anything, Benna. But uh, Benna was the winner of our uh, 209 Poetry World Cup. He's a great slam poet from Brisbane. And a gen he wanted me to get over the puzzle. A general poet fetishist. I got it. <laughs> and poetical imposter. Please welcome Benna. He's going to do a short piece for you. How is everyone? How's the weekend? from? <laughs> um, excuse me, Hibbin. I know it is utterly controversial, but I am going to read. <laughs> yeah, go like that. <laughs> Due to certain logical circumstances which made poetical preparation uh, in this period quite impossible. So, um, anyway, this is called Two Party Tosh or Election Therapy. Too hot for tone, or I rant 2.0. Okay, mate, let's get this straight. This two-party system's way, way out of date. It's like meteorites striking dinosaurs, extinction plus plus. A thylacine dodo impaled on a woolly mammoth's tusk. It's become oh so inelegant, restrictive and inane, where you have a choice between two liars, both equally lame. I mean, a choice between Pepsi, Peter and Coca Paul is no choice at all when they both worship the god of corporate capital. See, I come from a land down under, a village of corporate pillage and plunder. Can you hear the political blunders? That's Labour dumb and Liberal dumber. <laughs> now, I would do the flute loop, but I might get sued. No kookaburras are free to sing in the age of larrikin lawsuits. Actually, bugger it. Do -do 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 Sue me. <laughs> anyway, with the downfall of the Dutch government, it got me thinking. These power broker faction rats must be seriously drinking. So, I went to the library and uh, I was confused and the whole saga was itching me. So, I went to the library and borrowed a okay, okay. dictionary. I looked up the literal meaning of our lovely lucky land and it read so forth in my trembling hand. Australia, a frontier resource colony where democratically elected leaders are doomed if their policies get up the noses of the aristocrat squatter mining tycoons. Ah, it seems my suspicions were correct. We haven't quite evolved past the state of insects. See, we're still having serious problems with compassion and respect, despite how well our hollow apologetic rhetoric is kept. I mean, for Christ's sake, Kev went and apologised, yet we've still got an outback intervention apartheid, different coloured cues in NT shopping malls, tribal elders being dis disrespected by pimply face checkout trolls, indigenous men 2010 working for rations, it's like we've all taken some really, really bad acid. <laughs> and flashback to some middle-aged era pre-cooked Captain Jurassic. Stone Age rage where question time is like a schoolyard bashing. <laughs> 
Actually, it's the same without the ask. Although I got mad paranoia about a budgie smuggling ballot. <laughs> ah, Mr. Speaker, I seem to take a sneak peek at the leaked sheet from the debrief where I noticed the onus was on a government bonus, which we did delete, but they didn't phone us. And the member for melodrama said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the member for uh, Remember said, poopy, poopy, pa. And the member for Benelon, please pull your head out of your ass. And the member for Remember, what the flock is all this farce? <laughs> so it's with a sigh, I try and insulate myself from the madness. We've sold our blue sky. Mine, mine, American dreams of Peter Gallant, whose wholesome plans fall by executed electrostatic. Four men dead, another policy on the run. Run rabbit. Opposition draws war lines, resurrecting bad habits. Waving conservative Catholic as a diseased, toxic carrot. The donkey, a disenfranchised citizenry called apathetic addicts. And I'm embarrassed. Jesus Christ, with dykes on bikes on the Sabbath. Who can invent a more smuggish, thuggish, patronising, patriarchal parrot? The misogynator with his lipstick stuck up Joe Hockey's sloppy habit. <laughs> this guy glorifies the monarchy like it was gloriously avid, and not the biggest historic con based on inbred intermarriage. Like how he vows that the West is God's gift to savages, but when I look at his party room, all I see are those images. <laughs> And now my tongue's twisted like Julie Bishop's face. The death stare is arctic, even when she's having a good day. Barnaby rejoicing as if it were him holding the reins. Both sides of the dice so dysfunctional it's hard to understand what they're trying to say. And it's all the damn same. But don't worry, relax. Their motives are as well hidden as Chappelle Corby's stash. Pop box political gigolos doing lame favours for cash because democratic corruption is the new black. It's all rhyme, though, perks in an Adele Carl's Busby crash. History repeating so fast, I'm dizzy from the dash. Anna Bjorki Bly selling the state, demolishing assets en masse. So addicted to growth, she's prostituting herself for cold, hard corporate cash. And Julie Bishop's office is the heart sink of WA Inc. WA Jones. The infamous Mediterranean restaurant where Bondi and the boys used to get a drink. The Ice Queen's Palace, a past place of underbelly sins. It's some serious amnesia we must suffer to let such tragic irony slip. So, why on earth do we keep voting these ass dumb scumbags in? I mean, you could vote a donkey or ultimately just refuse, chase that ideal golden carrot of anarchic self-rule. But not to vote is still a choice to choose not to do. A victory for apathy, perhaps. It'll still make one party lose. But old politicians and politicians, I hear you all say. Whether Labor or Liberal, they're all criminal the damn same. Muppets and power puppets playing the white rich man's game. Or megalomaniac ego testicles who simply have no shame. There's phony baloney monotony on the moan and groany groove. Inarticulate and rude. He got the start sta 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 of rap fine tune. And he was dim-witted enough to report the written gospel truth. Wow, he wants to be PM, yet he can't even pull off a TV interview. Go, Kerry O'Brien, the lion, the man. Slam K. Rudd with a thud in seven-day report, man. Yeah. Smash Tony the next week and was going for a hat trick. But old Swanee played it safe with the answer, your own question, crap trick. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. Where was I? Ah, yes. Tony Abbott's gone rabid like when maggots inhabit the corpse of a dead horse but with fearless abandon. It's totally lame. Tony, you really need to get some originality, creativity in your game. There you are on red faces like some ventriloquistic farce, jumping around all jolly with little Johnny's hands right up your ass. <laughs> right, Tony, you give me murphy, little Tony. Your devilish trickery, that word choices is dead, is totally baloney. I'm sure you practice some doctors and Catholic like magic to make sure. To resurrect it like Jesus, Lazarus, or Al Gore. Just uh, rebranded to something like a uh, very fair choice word. Really, that'll settle the score in that. Get, get, uh, get rid of that pesky, red headed Babylonian whore. <laughs> Julia, darling, you got blood on your hands and mud on your frock. Labor's done a sign of persecution, sure, put the rod into Ruddock. <laughs> then you launch a sharp scud into Ruddock's back paddock. Well, it was more like a coal mine dug by a rabbit, feral rabbit. I mean, this refugee fear and loathing is totally outrageous. As if sanity is a disease gone fully contagious. Nazi media ruin up a fear, firestorm for ages. That's fear, false evidence appearing real on all our front pages.
Forget your saviors. Jesus would have locked them up in little concrete cages, out of sight, out of mind, in the desert where the woman of war range rages. Forget responsibility we hold for illegally invading impoverished nations and locking up poor people when they come asking for favours. Fair go, yeah, if you got money and or white skin. And we'll probably also judge you on your sort of religion. I mean, we're not racist, it's, it's just a matter of spin. Seriously, we knew some black people that used to live here before we moved in. So now, we will determine who comes to our country and the circumstances under which they come in. Ah, ah, shoot! Oh, excuse, I've got a rough as guts case of that far out flipping flu. It's not it a flu of the bird or that flu of the swine. It's the flag waving flu. A damn flu of the mind. And for a Catholic, it's amazing how much Tony can really hate him. Which makes me think that most of the time he's got Jesus mixed up with Satan. It makes me ashamed of my culture, ashamed of my race. It's un Australian like waving a frickin' flag in your face. Where's the fair go digger and uh, helping your mates? Yeah, mythology's good for controlling the apes. And the insanity is salient. Thus, I sometimes sink into thinking we're a race of stray aliens. A stray aliens, oh, let us lose voice, for we are apathy. With blood for oil and land all spoiled, half our democracy. We've colonized with genocide and nothing's really changed. Still stealing land with fascist plans to advance the white man's way. Julia Rudd is just a Neo Howard son. <laughs> and corporate terror reigns. Labour or live their own for the shit. It's all the power game. So get a grip and rock the shit and stop being so damn lame with what you do in everyday cast votes for something sane. Boycott the rot force, watch the cops till all is all fair trade. With conscience pain we sure feel the shame as they advance the right man's Way. So what on earth is a discerning intelligent voter to do when we're all stuck in the pipe of party political number twos? We need a political plumber with a whole heap of wisdom. <laughs> Perhaps some kind of bipodic Eureka Stockade 2.0, a non loco motion round Parliament led by Ms. Minogue. I'm barricade for the larrikin to bring them back in vogue. Get up with the chaser to heal our nation's woes. We need a Parliament of politicians. A government of verse and rhyme, an eloquence of benevolence to walk your talk in time. We need a people's party of people beyond robotic corporate clones. Leaders speaking for other species, protecting all our homes. We want TVs kicked out on the curbs, food forests throughout the birds, stuff the lawn, free the raw prawn, learn to grow fruit if you tame urban spawn. We want a treaty and respect for land, teach all people permaculture and solar panels on every rooftop now, all uranium coal kept in the ground. We need a PM that's guaranteed with a human heart and insanity free. Preferably who's seen through eyes of DMT. A leader with a dream time scheme. We want an elders council of wise old souls on parliament. He'll keep an ancient healing whole. A sacred balance at one with the land. So cast your vote and make it grand. So cast your vote and make it land. Thank you very much.